Hey guys, Mikosha here. Um, today it's going to be part 5 of our bow build journey and this video is going to be on getting omniscience. So in the part 4 we had a 1 to 5 divine budget trinity tornado shot setup without omniscience obviously and this video will be talking about the transition on getting omniscience. Um, why I think there's going to be the need of a completely separate video on that is because omniscience changes the fundamental of our build and omniscience build work completely differently than um, other types of build and so that's why i wanted to make a full video on just a transition uh, to help you guys so it's going to be a transition to trinity elemental damage tornado shot to trinity elemental damage tornado shot with omniscience um, we could still use the rage setup or not uh, depending on the amount of currency you have and the how good your omniscience gear is going to be uh, I'm going to be going on the explanation of the build if you guys are new, but this is not really a build guide uh, as I want uh, the end goal to be physical to coal conversion and that's going to be coming out right after, so maybe like five days after this video uh, when you have enough currency. So I want to make this video clear, this is the transition video, so I'm going to be explaining how to go from no omni to omni. Um, yeah. There's going to be a small crafting portion at the end. Uh, please let me know if you like this form of explanation for crafting as well. Uh, I'm going to be keeping obviously the PowerPoint format for all the build explanation and stuff. I just wanted to know if you guys are going to like the crafting uh, explanation I'm going to be giving at the end of the video. So just please let me know at the comments down below. And if you want to add anything else or if you think uh, I should be doing this or that instead, uh, please let me know. Um, the next video coming up is going to be the transition uh, from, you know, the Trinity setup to physical to coal conversion. And that's going to be an actual build guide as well as the transition guide. Um, and after that, it's going to be a completely separate video. I'm going to be making remaking my first video, uh, you know, the uh, how to reach a billion of DPS tornado shot build. I'm going to be remaking it uh, with more knowledge. And, you know, I've made a small I've made a few mistakes in that video and I've learned a lot from the comments down below. So I'm going to be remaking that with, uh, well, hopefully no mistakes. Uh, and then after that, uh, once those two videos are up, I will be starting a new video project. So, you know, this these videos were the Tornado Shot project. You know, you could have, you know, used Lightning Arrow instead, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to start a new video project. I'm thinking maybe crafting or maybe currency. Uh, please let me know what you guys want. Uh, and then I'll start those projects after those build series. So for today's, t today's video, we're going to start right in. Uh, we're going to talk about what is omniscience, uh, when to transition, uh, do we stay trinity or physical to cold, the gear needed, the gems, a uh, slight tree overview, which is not going to change that much, but you know, still going to be an overview. And then I'm going to be talking about basic crafting omniscient stuff. Uh, this is going to be, as I said, not a crafting guide, so it's going to be more like a test. And you guys let me know if it was clear or not, and if you want things to change a bit for the crafting part. So now let's talk about omniscience. Why is this so good? Um, you've heard omniscience if you've searched anything about bow builds. Any good bow build, all right, uh, will use the omniscience build, uh, amulet because it is so strong. Um, first of all, it gives you elemental resistance, which is very good for defense, and it gives you elemental penetration. If you read omniscience, it says all modifiers to attribute instead apply to omniscience, which means you will have absolutely no attributes except your base attributes. As we are playing Ranger, you're going to have 32 dex, 14 intelligence, 14 strength. But it will transform all those attributes, which means you do not gain any inherent attribute um, bonuses, such as evasion or like physical damage or energy shield, stuff like that. Uh, but you will gain 1% elemental resistance per 15 omnis uh, omniscience, sorry, and penetrate 1% elemental resistance per 15 omniscience. Uh, which means that a single mod is able to give you a defensive uh, mod and an offensive mod, which means on a six modded item, if you have three attributes, you basically have three defensive mods and three offensive mods, and then you can have three other mods that you want, which basically makes your items nine modded items with only six mods. And that's, um, you know, that's more of a low key uh, um, bonus that omniscience gives is because you're able to basically stack more mods on your items. Finally, attribute requirements can be satisfied by 15 to 25 percent omniscience. When you have a lot of omniscience, that last line does not change anything. But in the beginning, especially in the transition, it is quite important, and we will be talking about it later on in the video. But first of all, I want to talk about elemental penetration. 
So, for example, I deal 100 damage with a 0 penetration against an enemy that has 0% elemental resistance, I will be dealing him 100 damage. Now, if I have, if I still deal 100 damage uh, with 0 pen, and the enemy has a 50% elemental resistance, then I'll be only dealing 50 damage. If I deal 100 damage against an enemy that has minus 50 resistance, so for example, people that run minus 60 chaos resistance, the moment you get hit, your HP drops crazy. And same thing with elemental resistance. If the enemy has a negative 50% elemental resistance, we will be doing 150 damage, which is basically a 50% increase of DPS. Now, if I go against an enemy with the 50% res, but I, I, I'm able to penetrate, all right? There's a difference between a 50% elemental penetration and being able to penetrate 50%, all right? If I'm able to penetrate 50% of its resistance, I will be dealing 100 damage instead of 50, which is basically doubling my DPS. Now, if I'm able to reach 100% elemental penetration, I'll be able to triple my DPS um, if I had zero penetration, which means... Um, Penetration is completely OP, okay? In the beginning, any increase to penetration, uh, which is equal to increase of DPS, the penetration will be better. So if you're able to double your penetration, it is better than if you're able to d double your DPS. Now, obviously, if you have 1% penetration and you double it, well, it's better to double your DPS, right? But with Omniscience, uh, because we will be easily able to achieve more than 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% penetration, even 100% elemental penetration, um, like big increases to your element of penetration are mad OP. All right, if you want more information, I suggest you watch the first video. I go more in depth for that. Uh, but yeah, just know that initiance is very OP. Now let's talk about satisfy with percentage Omni, right? Uh, the ratio is between 15 to 25. Let's say I need an item that has a requirement of 100 dex and I have the amulet that can be satisfied with 25%. Uh, we will then have 100 divided by 25%, which is 0 0.25, which means we will need 400 omniscients to be able to socket that said item. So the higher it is, the lower the omni we, ne we need to get it going, but it will not impact the defense or offense, right? So especially in the beginning, it's important. Once you have a lot of currency or a lot of omniscients, you don't care, right? So when you want to do the transition, it's really important to know how much omniscience you need because a lot of people, they're gonna smack omniscience and then they're not gonna be able to use any single item, which basically makes, well, the build bricked. And then they're gonna have to spend a lot of currency to be able to get those attributes. They're gonna start changing their trees uh, and then they're gonna have a worse experience than if they did not transition. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the highest requirement. It doesn't have to be highest requirement of dex or int and strength just the highest requirement if your highest requirement is 200 dex uh, 180 strength and 150 int you're just going to take 200 dex then what you're going to do is you're going to divide it by the number of satisfaction and omni example you buy your omniscience at 17 well then you're going to do 200 dex divided by 1.17 it's going to give you the minimum requirement of omniscience then you add plus 100 as a buffer and that is going to be the minimum omniscience required for your build before transitioning now, how the hell do you get that? If you copy Omniscience into your POB, uh, I showed how to copy it in my last video, it's gonna automatically transform uh, all your uh, attributes to Omniscience. Then if you're able to add after that your um, your Omniscience, uh, Omniscience item, which I'm gonna show how to make, it's gonna tell you exactly the Omniscience required. And all you have to do is have a buffer of 100. So you're able to you know play around a bit without having a problem with gear. What is best for Omniscience? Well, there's many ways of getting attributes, right? The first one is gonna be plus all attributes. Plus all attributes is the worst, all right? Often uh, you're gonna have, example, you have plus 10 all attributes. Well, it will only give you 10 Omni and not 30, all right? It's not gonna give you 10, it's not plus 10 strength, plus 10 uh, int, and then plus 10 dex, and then transform to Omni. The moment you have anything that is written attribute, you replace it by Omni, all right? So plus 10 all attribute, it's not plus 10 all attribute, it's plus 10 all Omni, all right? Um, and often attributes, the, the number in front of attribute is always going to be lower than hybrids and hybrids will always be lower than individual attributes, which means you'll easily find plus 10 attributes, but you'll never find plus 50 attributes, but you can find plus 50 decks. So attributes is bad. Hybrid mods work the same way. If you get plus 10 to strength and intelligence, it will only give you plus 10 and not plus 20 Omni, all right? Finally, because individual attribute mods give higher numbers, we can addition 
uh, we can have any addition to be raw single attributes, all right? So you want plus 50 to dex instead of plus 40 to all attributes, all right? Um, so a T1 dex will give more than T1 all attribute or T1 hybrid mods. Finally, increases in a single attribute will increase all Omni and not the attribute then converted to Omni. For example, um, what do I mean by that? Example, I have 100 int, 100 dex, 100 strength, and I have a 15% increase int. That will give us 345 Omni and not 315. Because uh, if we didn't transform it to Omni, it will give you 115 int because you have the 15% increase, 100 dex, 100 strength, which is a total of 315. But with Omni, it's a hundred omni, a hundred omni, a hundred omni with fifteen percent increased omni, um, which will make three forty-five and not three fifteen. And that's why Black Sun Crest is such a good helmet because you can have a maximum of fifteen percent increase int, dex, and strength. So which means forty-five percent increase omni. That's why um, most builds will run the Black Sun Crest, uh, and it's a very cheap item. So very very good. So now that we spoke about how and to transition to um, like how omniscience work, we're going to talk about when to transition to Omni. First, you're going to have to do the math by yourself, all right? Use POB. You guys are able to do it. It's not that scary. First, just do the math to know how much Omni is needed, all right? Uh, not every single amulet is going to have the 25% um, by Omni. So just make sure that you're able to buy the highest one for your budget, all right? Don't spend four more divines for 25. It is not worth it. You can put the four divines somewhere else, which will be way more helpful for you, all right? Finally, it's going to be a question of currency. Um, every transition uh, will often feel worse in the beginning, no matter what it is, all right? So having enough currency to balance, uh, uh, balance it out is key, all right? So you're going to have to think. I'm gonna have to need enough currency to get omniscience, and I'm gonna have to have enough currency to buy or craft omni rings, which means uh, omni gear, sorry. So that means enough currency to get your omni rings, your black sun crest, maybe boots, uh, gloves, and then a lethal pride and a few tree changes. I did not add the uh, the chest because you can still keep your old chest, which is, for example, Hyrie's Eye or something, or any other chest, right? Uh, it's not the most important, but especially the rings, helmet, and maybe like uh, boots uh, with the lethal pride, which is like a few chaos, so it's not really that important. And the tree changes will cost you like maybe 10 regrets. But yeah, it's especially the rings and your helmet and your boots that are going to be the cost uh, added on top of omniscience to have the smoothest uh, transition possible. Now, Trinity setup versus cold to physical. As we said before, transition costs resources and will often feel bad in the beginning. So going a double transition, so going Trinity setup to Trinity setup, um, uh, sorry, for going Trinity setup with no Omni, with going directly Omni physical to cold conversion is a double um, transition because you're going to transition to Omni and then you're going to transition from Trinity to physical uh, conversion. It is very do doable and I do it usually. The thing is, most of you guys are not as experienced, right? So it's going to be because omniscience works differently and because physical to cold works differently, it's going to be like double double comprehension things and it's going to cost you even more. So that's why I suggest for new players or players that have never played bow builds and are trying to make it themselves uh, to transition first to omniscience, get the feel of it, and then going to physical to cold conversion. Our end goal, guys, is going to be physical to cold conversion because it is the best tornado shot build, in my opinion, possible. Now, there might be debate with the original Sin ring. Uh, I'm going to have to do math about that because I know it's very, very strong if done correctly. But for now, physical to cold conversion uh, is the best bow build ever possible. All right. Um, if you guys were like playing Lightning Arrow and you really have the feel about it and you don't want to go Tornado Shot, I still suggest you follow this guide and you just don't go physical to cold conversion because it's going to break your Lightning Arrow. Um, so just stay Trinity if possible. Now, uh, it's also it's going to be a point now that you guys are going to have to take the decision. Do I want to stay after this video uh, tr uh, Trinity setup or do I still want to go physical to cold conversion. I'm going to be talking about it more in the next video, but it's just to let you guys know that if you know that you're not going to make a hundred divines or more this league, I still su I suggest you watch this video, you understand the build, the, the transition, and you do not go physical to cold conversion because physical to cold conversion uh, in the B, uh, will have a higher ceiling, but for a hundred uh, div budget, 
I still think Trinity will feel better than physical to coal conversion because the physical coal conversion will cost you more divines and you could put those in your build. Um, so yeah, but it will be discussed in the next video, all right? That's not the point of this video. It's just to say that uh, for now, we're gonna stick to Trinity setup for lower end budgets. Now, when I say lower end budget, this video, you can if you have a 50 divine budget, you can still run this, all right? Uh, this is scalable, I think up to 100 divine. Uh, if you want to transition to physical to cold before, uh, be my guess, you can do it at like 40 divines. You can do it at 30 if you know what you're doing. It's just that if you know you're not going to go higher than 100 divines, uh, just stop uh, to this video. Before we get in, we're going to talk about the minimum defense requirements. If you've watched my videos, you already know what I'm going to say. If not, it's important to understand what they are. Minimum defense requirements for our build, so it's important to understand it is only for our build, my version of this build, it's going to be elemental resistance capped. This is, this is your top priority. Before DPS, before anything, you want your elemental resistance being capped. You want a spell suppression at 100%. Use Hyri if needed. Um, if you're at like 95% and it's going to cost you like 5 divines to get like to 100, maybe not, all right? But it's pretty easy to get 100% spell suppression. Then you're going to try to get ailment avoidance at 100. How to get that? There's going to be mods, right? In your boots, you're going to have implicit and explicit. In your chest, you're going to have uh, explicit uh, that will say that uh, avoid ailments. Um, you can also use ancestral vision. Uh, I suggest it. Very, I think it's the best version, uh, the best thing to do, especially if you have 100% spell suppression. Um, what does ancestral vision do? It says, as you can see it here, um, modifies the chance to suppress spell damage, also apply to chance to avoid ailment, ailments, elemental ailments at 50% of the value. So if you're at 100% spell uh, capped, you basically get 50% chance to avoid. And then getting the other 50 is very easy. You can easily get that with your boots. You can also use Storm Shroud, which modifies the chance to avoid being shocked, also apply to uh, elemental ailments. It is very good, but I think because we are a spell capped, um, you know, uh, build, uh, I still think Ancestral Vision is um, better, but if you got a very good roll on like avoid uh, being shocked, uh, well then just get yourself Storm Shroud, all right? Now we want evasion more than 50% in hideout with no flask. If you use Hyrie's Ire, you have no excuse having less than 50% uh, evasion. Like I don't even know how it's possible, all right? So the goal is going to get that um, because, well, half the hits are not going to hit us and that's great. Now, obviously, if you're able to reach 90 with ease, be my guest, it's really good, but the minimum requirement is going to be 50. Now, finally, chaos, if possible, have it at least zero, so you don't get, like, murdered by, like, chaos ground or something. Um, but then again, it's the least important thing, and it, it's not a, it's not, it doesn't go in the requirements, okay? If you have minus, like, 10, uh, you're going to live with minus 10. Like, I run with minus 60, so, like, <laughs> uh, you do you, all right? But I still suggest you go uh, zero if you're, like, kind of a noob, because, uh, you know, you, you'll die less. For your minimum offense requirement that we want, so that is going to be what we're going to aim for at the end of this video. It's going to be one-shotting every single mob in the map. All right, this does not count rare, unique, uh, and unique monsters or like weird god touched, like immortal, stupid, random mobs that like are invincible for absolutely no reason. But you should be able to one shot every single mob in your map, and that's literally a defense requirement because if you kill everything before they even like exist, they can't hit you. Um, and because we are a mapper build with high DPS, one shotting mobs is what we want all right and then our end goal is going to be one shotting rare unique and the weird ones but we're not there yet all right for the gear there's going to be uniques what i suggest it's going to be the black sun crest some people will run the heat shiver and vols vision vols vision is for the uh, rage setup heat shiver is if you're able to freeze a lot which is often with high crit but i still suggest for the transition to still stick with black sun crest especially that you're running triple elemental damage so heat shiver will kind of be like good but not as strong as the Black Sun Crest. For your amulet, uh, well, at this point, only use Omniscience. I've seen some people running Omniscience without Omni. I I don't know how, um, but it didn't work, by the way. So just for the love of God, just run Omniscience, all right? If you have Mageblood, obviously use it. Example, it's your second character. If you do not have Mageblood, do not run away from this video. You do not need Mageblood to have a very good Omniscience build, all right? For your bow, 
I forgot to give an example, sorry. Uh, but you want the highest elemental DPS possible with all three types of elemental. You want plus arrows, uh, one or two. You want attack speed crit base, could be used in the rage setup. Uh, so your old one, you could still use it. Uh, now that you know you're starting to have more budget and things are starting to drop, um, don't at least if you're going to run 800 elemental dps bow which is low at least get two arrows if not try to reach the 900 to 1000 elemental dps bow fear quiver if your minimum defense requirements are okay without your quiver only offensive mod i do not want a single uh defense mod except if it's hp all right so you're gonna take a bunch of quivers you're gonna smack them on your quiver place if you see your DPS go up, don't even think it's the it's the right option. All right, um, life and accuracy are the exception to that. Uh, this is I crafted this by just smacking bunch of I don't even know what I did. I just smashed bunch of like bubblegum currency and it gave me this. It's really easy to make. It probably costs like one divine. Um, like offensive like quivers are just easy. Like some of them will drop. You just put them on. If you see your DPS go up, that's it. All right. Bow attacks for an additional arrow will not modify your DPS, but you need to understand if your DPS is at 50,000 and you have plus one arrow or not plus one arrow, you basically have a 20% increased DPS if you have an extra arrow, right? Because you, you go up to six, uh, which is very good. Um, so bow attacks will not modify your DPS. So just do the math. If I deal this amount of DPS with these amount of bow attacks, uh, bow, uh, b um, sorry, uh, arrows, and if I deal less DPS, but with more arrows, which one, if I multiply everything, does more DPS, you go highest DPS. Fear rings, uh, Omni rings. Omni rings will basically be the triggers of your omniscience. Without your Omni rings, your build does not work. You want a total of 165 attributes minimum. Um, you know, if you're able to reach like only 160, just run 160. Uh, but usually you're gonna like, the actual amount you want is 180 minimum, but because it's just a transition and you guys are most of the time gonna be, gonna be on a budget, 165 attributes uh, with the quality increase, right? Which increases by 20%, um, 165 I think is the bare minimum. You want flat life, flat damage if possible, and then you want the minus cost of mana enchant, right? Chan non channel, non channeling, okay? Make sure it's non channeling. Skills have um, set minus seven or minus six to total mana cost. Um, I made this in like seven seconds. Uh, I will be making a guide right after, like at the end of this video, you will see a, a small guide on how to make exactly those basically. Um, yeah, make sure you have both of them. All right, you want two omniscience rings. For your belt, you wanted added attributes. A total of 100 would be great. I suggest the Stygian Bevise base with an eye. Uh, the eye will only have offensive mod. We don't care about defensive mods. Uh, you want increased attribute impl uh, also another base that is good is increased attribute implicit belt which has like uh, i will be showing an example at the end of the video uh, for example 15 percent increased dex right which is very good with omniscience um after that you want added flat anything with flask usually is going to be good if you hit it example uh, i don't know flask life recovery rate right you smack your flask uh, you get hit you pop your flask it's going to go back up right it's not needed um other useful mods basically all you want is just increased attributes and added life if possible for the rage setup no changes kaum gloves a gauntlet and then vols vision uh vols vision make sure nothing is corrupted gems do not count as um like you can run uh you can run uh corrupted gems sorry uh, they do not count as a uh, gear so just a thing though, um, some will have difficulty getting enough omniscience with the full rage setup. So some people will drop the Vols Vision, for example, and then uh, just um, run Blacks and Crest. Some people will just drop everything. Uh, your comfort, to be honest, I suggest you bl drop Vols Vision, run Blacks and, uh, Blacks and Crest. And if you still need help for uh, more attributes, then drop Kaum's Gloves. If you do drop your gloves, um, for your implicits, you want the gain one rage per hit no more than second like something second we don't care about the number of seconds right don't pay more like if you craft it or if you want to buy it directly a 0 0.7 or 1.2 it's a big difference but in the beginning we do not care because you will be changing those gloves anyways and then an exposure to the element you deal the most amount of damage you're going to go in uh, your um your pob or even your tooltip the highest dps you have 
uh, just try to get that um, exposure if not any exposure that you deal so any fire cold or lightning don't break your head if you're on a budget you don't need to target um, this is some random gloves that I found on some random poe ninja thing they're, they're okay to be honest uh, they don't have the uh, exposure they have increased marks of uh, effect of marks but yeah so and for your explicits all you want is like attributes spell suppression and attack speed all right uh, he has like 45 decks if you need more uh, just get 45 decks and like 40 uh, I don't know strength uh, spell suppression to get that capped and then attack speed is always good and if you can chaos resistance um, yeah for your boots uh, implicit I suggest the avoid ailments or gain physical as extra and then action speed or movement speed action speed is better because action speed modifies your movement speed as well as your attack speed uh, he did not have action. This is an also another thing I found on POA Ninja. And then for your explicits, you want movement speed. Obviously, this is like, if you do not have movement speed on your boots, like, why are they even boots? Um, attributes, suppress, avoid ailments. Uh, you see here, he has spell suppression, um, movement speed, avoid. He doesn't have uh, attributes, uh, but you can just smack uh, an essence of like rage or something, and it will give you attributes. For your body armor, uh, High Rezar is still a very good choice, especially if you're a dedicated mapper. It will give you a very big boost of DPS, uh, a lot of evasion rating, dex, which is good, and it will also give you 30% chance to, spell suppress, to suppress spell damage, which is a very good boost. Uh, I still think it's quite expensive though, but if you know you're going to be a dedicated mapper, I do suggest this chest because you can still use it up like even when you're going to be dealing like 40 million DPS, so like it's a very good uh, chest in my opinion. Um, if you do not run High Resire and you prefer crafting or something, uh, run the Anger has increased effect and then effect of non cursed auras because Anger gives you raw added fire, which is very good, uh, especially compared to uh, Hatred and Wrath, which only gives you increases. And because we deal not a lot of damage, increases aren't very good. Free Explicits, Suppress, Avoid Ailments if uncapped, Attributes, Life, Mana Reservation, Chaos Res. Uh, pretty straightforward. Example, this is, you can easily do this easily do this by yourself you can also buy like a um a fractured base with like suppress or strength and then just roll with essences um i will not be giving a guide at the end of this video on how to make a chest um that will be on a separate video for the flask same thing as last setup all right you want the life flask i suggest automation by this stage all right so when charges reach full it will reuse it and that you're able to craft out on your bench Quicksilver, Diamond, Silver Flask, Jade. Quicksilver to get more speed, because you don't want to be slow. Diamond to get your crit chance. Silver Flask for permanent onslaught, which is movement speed and attack speed. And then Jade for evasion uh, to get that, uh, you know, starting to go in like the 60s and 70s. Always transmute them to get added bonuses. Good added bonuses are increased recovery, increased speed, attack speed, critical strike chance, evasion, and other helpful. By the way, guys, if you have, inc if you have a Diamond Flask, which increases your crit, you don't necessarily need increased crit as a um, added bonus on this. You can have it on something else, all right? It's more expensive when it's on the same item, but if you're using all four flask, you don't need uh, increased movement speed on an increased, uh, on a uh, Quicksilver flask and increased evasion on a Jade flask. You can have increased movement speed on the Jade flask and increased uh, evasion on the uh, Quicksilver. It changes nothing as long as you're using both. Um, yeah, sorry, that was an important mistake I've seen. Also, having two effects on flask do not add up. So example, you have uh, this flask, right? Uh, just And it has increased evasion and you have a second flask that also has increased evasion. They will not add up, all right? So do not run two increased critical strike chance on two flasks. When they're up, they will not add, all right? It will only be one. Obviously for some people, it still did not go in their brain that having twice the same flask, so for example, having two quick silver flasks will not add their effect. And then um, if you have an onslaught flask, uh, if you if you have onslaught generation, for example, I don't know, 6% chance to gain onslaught on kill, do not use an onslaught flask. It doesn't make sense. Use something else. Uh, just it could be a to, to, to get more chaos res or um, to have anything else, to be honest. Just don't use an onslaught flask if you already have onslaught generation. Gems, gems will not change from last video. I will be like giving you the gems if you did not watch the last video, but they do not change if you watch this, uh, the, the video, so you can just skip this part if you want. Uh, but if you guys are just waiting on like higher budgets, uh, I, for, I suggest alternate qualities. Uh, get Anomalous Inspiration, Divergent Mark on Hit, Anomalous Precision, and Anomalous Hatred. 
uh, anomalous hatred do not use it yet but it will be useful for the conversion and these are listed in order of importance so inspiration first then mark on hate then precision then hatred um, if you have no clue what anomalous diversion are I'm gonna be talking about it in the next video because for now uh, it's still not in our budget our main skill is going to be obviously tornado shot and at this point you can still use lightning arrow instead I suggest Tornado Shot, Trinity, Inspiration, Support, Increased Critical Damage, Elemental Damage, Mirage Archer. The three last ones can be interchanged if you have socket problems or if you have color problems. Uh, just look at your POB. If you see your DPS go up, don't even think. As long as you do not, do not, all right, use Elemental Focus on Tornado Shot, please do not. For your bossing skill or a single target, we're going to be using Not Siege Ballista, Artillery Ballista, guys, Artillery, I made the mistake um, last video. Artillery Ballista, Inspiration Support, Elemental Focus, Increased Critical Damage, Added Cold, Elemental Damage. I do not suggest you run Focus Ballista because Focus Ballista uh, makes that you have to shoot for, uh, for Artillery Ballista to trigger, which means that, example, you're running away in a boss fight, um, your Ballistas won't be shooting, which means your DPS, even though on paper is going to go up, because you're not shooting while well, you're dealing no damage, which means your DPS uptime is going to be way lower, which means your actual DPS will go down. That's why I do not suggest elemental fo um, ballista focus. For your supports, I suggest the Mana Forge, Arrow, Frenzy, and Power Charge. Um, I'm going to go briefly again on Mana Forge. Mana Forge is a support. Um, once you spend 300% of the mana cost of this, of the support, um, it will trigger automatically. So I'm using Tornado to Shot. Once I reach 300% mana of the cost of example Frenzy, I'm going to be shooting the supported uh, gem and for us it's going to be frenzy what is frenzy well it, it's an attack that gives a character a frenzy charge if it hits an enemy which is good because we know frenzy charges are very good for our build um, i already explained what frenzy charges are in part three um, and we will have the power charge on critical support which gives us a critical uh, a power charge if we crit um, what does a power charge do? It increases our critical strike chance by uh, by 50%, and we have three of them, so 150% increased critical strike chance, which is huge uh, when you're not crit capped. And at our budget, I do not think anyone will be crit capped. So very useful when you're not crit capped. If you're crit capped in hideout, do not run power charge, but if you're look, watching this video, I don't think you will be crit capped. So yeah. Other supports, Sniper's Mark, Mark on Hit, and Enhance if you have enough currency, and Life Tap. Sniper's Mark, obviously we've already spoke about, spoken about it, uh, Mark on Hit to be able to automate Sniper's Mark. Enhance will give more quality on Mark on Hit and Sniper's Mark, which is very useful, especially if you're using a um, Divergent Sniper's Mark. And use Life Tap, example you have, you're low on mana pool, using Life Tap, because when you Mark on Hit, it uses mana, alright, even if it's automatic. If you have all your mana reserved and just enough to use tornado shot and not enough for mark on hit go life tap it will use your hp instead um you know it's a small cost so it's not that big uh and it's well you'll be able to automate sniper's mark which is a very big dps boost finally unlinked from all of that uh, use a travel travel a traveling skill of personal choice i suggest if it's um unlinked to be a flame dash as you have three of them which is i think the best uh, unlinked travel skill especially when you're uh, like you're bossing or for example you're, you're against like a big mob right or if you want to get out of a situation you're gonna have to like travel skill like twice right if you use um, dash or something it only does it once and you'll be like kind of fucked finally uh, your auras I suggest grace uh, for evasion val haste do not use it the normal one do not use normal haste only use the val one Purative elements if you're not ailment capped but Try to get that ailment cap to 100 so you can drop purity of elements. Um, precision for crit and accuracy and elemental auras. I suggest anger because it gives added flat. Anger is the way to go uh, for now. Wrath and hatred aren't as good. If you have enough currency, use enlighten. Um, enlighten makes that the reservation multiplier is like lower than one, which means like, example, you have a 50% for anger with a level three uh, enlighten. It will cost. 46 percent and not 50 which is very good for you right you're, you're able to add like maybe one other aura example precision or something tree overview uh will not really change from the last one um for those with a bigger budget use the massive ring thread of hope and use this setup if not use the tree of the last video it changes nothing changed 
Uh, and if possible, get yourself the lethal. Pri if you get a lethal pride, try if for the ones with budget, try to find ones that give you a lot of uh, chance to deal double damage, or else no changes whatsoever. For the large, large cluster jewels, there's two families of large cluster jewels that we use. There's the eight passives and twelve passives. For the eight passives, you want martial prowess, feed the fury, and any other added passive skill. It must be any other, but it must be the one in the middle. For example, this is going to be Martial Prowess, this is going to be Free the Fury, and this is going to be a random other one. And it has to be in the middle here. Because if it's here, what we want is Martial Prowess and Feed the Fury, which means you're going to have to spend two extra points to reach Feed the Fury. And two extra po passive points are very important, so we don't want that. Most people we use, f uh, you're going to see a lot of people using um, Fuel the Fight. The reason they use fu Fuel the Fight is because um, Fuel the Fight will always be the one in the middle, but those Passive costs like 1.5 divine, and you can easily find an added passive skill in the middle that won't cost you 1.5 divine. It probably costs you like 30 chaos or something. Just copy the item, go in POB, and see oh, is um, Feed the Fury and uh, Martial Prowess uh, on the sides and not in the middle, then it's good and you can buy it or craft it. For the 12 passives, you want usually 4 modded with no added passives if possible. Because if you have an added passive, well, you only have it 3 modded. Why do we want that? It's because we want the 12% increased damage with bows and we want the increased effect, which is 25 or 35. 35 obviously is best because 35 will make it not 12% increased damage with bow, but 16%. And then you want attack speed, attack damage, and attributes. Now, this is a very expensive jewel, all right? This is like, I think, perfectly rolled. And the only better way of getting it is with synth or with um, corrupted. But if you have 25 increased effect, two attack speed, four strength, and like resistance, it's okay, all right? Just this is what you're trying to aim for, all right? Uh, and just use eight of the, uh, only use um, like this row, don't don't use the whole, uh, the whole run, all right? So leave the three on the side, like in the middle, un, unused. Um, for your medium clusters, there's usually also two families. There's going to be raw damage and crit ones. For now, we're going to try and go for the crit to get that thing capped. Um, even though the damage, even if you have less crit, will still be bigger DPS, but we're still going to try to get that thing to 100% crit for, um, you know, freeze and stuff like that. Um, for damage, I suggest eye to eye and repeater. Um, there's no difference between a four to five passive, all right? If it's four, you won't have this. If you have five, you'll have this. Just don't use it. It's a trap. Uh, four ones will cost way more than fives, but it changes absolutely nothing. This is a four. This is a five. It still costs us four to get what we want, so it changes nothing. For your crit, we want pressure point and quick getaway. There will be increases in crits. Also, be careful, guys, on the base of your medium clusters. Um, the added small passive grant 10% increased projectile damage. You only use one of them, but it's still more because you're, some people will sell 12% increased damage with staff, which basically you're wasting a point for nothing and skill tree points are very, very precious. So be careful of that also. Finally, uh, Thread of Hope, only the Massive Ring. If you do not have the Massive Ring, there is no purpose of investing into a Thread of Hope. Uh, and for lethal pride, uh, ones that give strength, which is good for omniscience, I suggest you wait for physical to cold conversion to invest a lot in your lethal pride because uh, the increased physical damage will be very strong for the physical to cold conversion, but will do abs like not a lot for your trinity setup. Double damage and other good bonuses. For people that don't know what lethal pride is, it's a jewel that you put and in the radius, it will give every uh, single passive point a bonus. On small passives, it will give plus two strength on the attribute passive. On small passive, like example, this one, it will give plus four strength. And on um, uh, like, you know, uh, I forgot those names, but, but you know, those ones, notables, sorry. Yeah, notables. On notables, it will give uh, stronger bonuses and you can have the 5% chance to deal double damage or 25%, a uh, 20% increase uh, strength and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, like, some people like me, I have a 25% total chance to deal double damage because it does it on five and I have a 60% increased physical damage. So it is very, very strong and is very, very low key. But in the beginning, do not invest in that. Just get that to get more omniscience. Basically, that's it. Now let's talk about crafting. Before we get into it, this is my first time making a crafting item for viewers. So it's gonna be the first time I'm explaining how to craft an item for everyone. So 
it might not be perfect it might be a bit confusing um if it's too confusing don't take a chance and look at another guide please i don't want to waste your currency um but i still think i made a good job all right i try to make it as co uh, comprehensible and as well done as like how i make my actual builds um but if you guys don't like the format on how i explain the crafting and you prefer like live examples i still think live examples are less details b detailed because you don't have all the possibilities but if you guys prefer that um you know i don't mind um and finally i just want to say this is not a crafting guide all right so i won't be explaining how crafting works i'm just going to be saying what you need and what to do so first of all rings unless you are using a synthesis base it should look like this all right do not use synthesis base if you have a lower budget do not just don't materials needed you're going to need a fractured base with a tier one attribute which is i think the minimum item level 83 um diamond is very good and amethyst base which is chaos res if not too expensive i know they are way more expensive i think they're like two divines extra um if you have enough divines use them because you will be using amethyst based for a long time until you switch to synthesis base you're gonna need an orb of scouring 10 intrinsic catalyst a regal orb the def def deafening essence of spite sorrow or rage if your T1 attribute is int, do not use the one in spite because it gives you int and it'll block. Just use sorrow or rage. If you have tier one attribute dex on your uh, fracture, then use spite and rage. Uh, same thing for rage. You're gonna need an annul orb in case you have all three prefixed filled after uh, your uh, essence. You're gonna have enough, if you have enough currency, if you do not have, skip veiled chaos and the uh, mana block part and just go for the uh, crafted enchant with minus uh, cost of non-channeling if you have the currency which i think is one or 1 1.2 divines usually it's going to be the wild br br bristle mountain what did what it does all right so when all suffixes are full the uh, wild will put a non-meta craft the non-meta craft are prefix cannot be changed or suffix cannot be changed stuff like that but because all our suffix are full it will give us the also uh, all, uh, cannot change um suffix cannot be changed on the crafting bench it's two divines and when i'm making this video um it's one divine so you basically save one divine um per ring you do it twice you're basically saving two divines just by going and uh, fighting that beast veiled chaos if you're doing the uh suffix block the uh, ma three augment orbs so basically when you craft on your crafting bench it's going to cost you three augment and then two alchemies up to four chaos and one orb of scouring for the uh, minus mana cost of non channeling skills and if you have an empty mod by the end exalt slam and now multiply all of this by two all right now if you did not understand what i said don't worry i'm going to be giving step by step on what to do all right so you buy yourself your ring whatever the base all right i went cheap um the preferred base obviously is chaos riz or synthesis implicit you're going to scour this once you scour this you're going to see 53 intelligence it's a tier one all right to see the tiers you all all you have to do is press alt and hover over the item you're going to use 10 intrinsic catalyst which are going to augment quality of attribute modifiers so you're going to see 53 63 basically plus 10 omniscience and if you have all three tier ones it's going to be plus 30 omniscience for free well not for free but like plus 30 omniscience you do it twice for two rings plus 60 omniscience it's quite a lot um then you're gonna regal orb to make your magic item to uh rare and why we do that is because you'll be able to use your essences uh this is essence of spite if i remember correctly because i'm using intelligence so you don't you, you just use any essence of spite or rage if you have the intelligence uh, attribute as um the uh, fractured base by the way guys I think the fractured intelligence will always be cheaper than in fractured dex and strength so be sure to check that out on trade i made a uh, interrogation point because we do not know how long it will take to hit two um tier one so tier one here and tier one here if you guys do not have a lot of budget if you hit a tier one and a tier two you can stop here all right but if you guys have the budget don't stop until you have triple tier one once you reach that point see here i have two prefixes and three suffix which is great that's exactly what we want if you have three prefix three suffix you're gonna have to annul orb and you have three chance out of five to hit a prefix all right if you hit a suffix you're gonna have to start this step all over so re-spamming the essence if you hit the prefix that's good 
you go to your um your beasts get the suffix cannot be changed i, I just meant crafting because uh, i just didn't feel like buying the beast but it works um once that done all right make sure it's suffix and not prefix all right just in case it doesn't work for whatever reason just make sure it's suffix you're gonna veil chaos all right that's gonna re-roll your um your item it might give you no prefix it might give you one prefix it might give you i don't know how many prefix whatever um most of the time it's okay unless it's like plus one h plus nine to life you can just re-roll uh, you go back to suffix cannot be changed and re-roll but if you don't have the budget you don't care right it could be plus 10 to like mana or something like even if it's bad we don't care all right um for now now that it's veiled all right you're gonna see this when you see those it's gonna be veiled we're gonna go on our crafting bench we're gonna use the lowest tier of mana so it's gonna give you plus between 25 to 34 mana and then you're gonna unveil with june why do we do that it's because we want to block the unveil with mana because we do not care about mana uh, which gives us a higher chance of getting flat life and mana regen all right some people will go added flat damage i still suggest added flat life because we do not have a lot of hp so with two rings getting at least a hundred and like 110 hp uh, is very 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 good all right and mana regen is very good because well if we have mana uptime at 100 all the time, well, our DPS isn't cut because if I have to shoot, wait 0.5 seconds and then reshoot because I have to wait for my mana regen, well, I'm cutting my DPS by a lot. So here, maximum life to regen, the prefix that we had that we do not care, and then our, our three suffix with the maximum mana. Then you're going to go, um, I suggest if you have an empty prefix to exalt slam, so you because you're still blocked on mana so it's going to give you something else than mana exalt to have plus one prefix and then you're going to go on your crafting bench and craft the cost of non-challenging skills this is what your um item should look like at the end um yeah to, the most important things all right are going to be the triple implicits uh a unveiled with uh our girl june or jun or whatever and then the not minus cost of non-challenging skills and that's how you craft those items I still think you can still, I'm pretty sure you can make craft, profit crafting. So if you're new to profit crafting and you want to try that out, it works. Um, all right. But for people that are scared, all right, or that they know that they're unlucky in their crafting, um, these rings are usually going to be a bit cheap. Uh, for now, it was four divines like two days ago. It might drop to three if you really are afraid. Or if you look at the price of the crafting items that I said, and you're like, oh my God, it's going to cost me more than three divines per ring, then just buy it outright. But example you have enough currency or you know you've never look uh, i know this doesn't have the minus channeling but you can just replace it on your bench but uh, sorry i, I kind of cut but just i still think that trying to craft those items by yourself is the best thing because it it helps you um it's like your first step in your crafting all right because when you're going to start going higher budget i'm going to be saying okay this build is going to cost you 200 divine it's going to cost you 200 divine only if you craft them It'll cost you 400 divines if you buy the items outright, all right? So that's why often you guys are gonna be watching videos on like 10 divine budget and you're like, bro, that's not 10 divine, that's like at least 20. Well, no, it's 10 divines to make. It's gonna cost you more than 10 divines if you wanna buy it outright, because you need to buy the person that crafts the item, right? You, you have to pay for his time, all right? So I still think it's a very good learning experience to try those rings, all right? If you have a very limited budget, don't try it. But if you have like, I don't know 30 divines to transition bro just try those rings on all right finally the last crafting thing i'm going to be talking about um are going to be belts i suggest a stygian vise with 85 item level which is the best or increased percent attribute implicit belt uh as you can see here now be careful about this you might see 18 percent increased dex and another one 18 percent increased dex what's important to note is if there's quality or not if there's quality, all right, the highest one, if there's no quality, the highest tier is going to be 13 to 15. But what some people have, they have like 9 to 11, and then they're going to quality, and it's going to go up to 13, 15. And they're going to price it as much as one that has 13, 15, which is one tier higher. So make sure to hover over and see if it's the highest tier. And highest tier is 13, 15. You don't have to go 13, 15, but it's just so you don't pay more for a worst base. Uh, for that i suggest item level at least 80 uh, to be able to get the in increased attribute um after that you use any essence with the highest amount of attribute and you just smash it 
all right don't go for targeting uh, if you want i suggest um you scour your belt you put four intrinsic um catalysts to go to a quality uh, to 20 and then essence 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 and after you're done just craft a um, item on your bench all right you do not have to target life you do not have to target stuff like that if you have resistance i suggest you re-roll uh, but just roll until you have a lot of attributes and then just stop there all right i just smacked those essences and it just gave me this belt which is life mana two tier one uh, um, one tier one uh, attribute and a tier two strength and then elemental damage and i was happy with it all right don't spend that much Damn. belts for your boots and your chest uh, just refer back to the beginning of the video. I, I'm not going to be making a crafting guide on those because I still think uh, they're not worth your resource yet. Um, and uh, yeah, so so basically that that's the end of the video. Um, if you guys watched this video thinking it was going to be a build guide, I'm sorry. I wanted to make a video only on the transition because the real build guide is physical to coal conversion. So all those videos follow each other. So if you watch those videos and you're like, I did not learn like... I learned a lot maybe, but you're not telling me what I should have as a build. Please refer to the last video. Um, and if you guys are like waiting for me to make more videos, I will be making more videos. Uh, I'm gonna be make, I'm gonna be like, you know, posting this video today. Well, I, like uh, today. And then I'll be working on the physical to coal conversion build. It's gonna be another transition video because I want to make sure that you guys have the smoothest experience possible. And then after I make the transition video to physical to coal conversion, I will be making a build guide on the physical to coal conversion tornado shot with a higher budget. Um, and then after that, I will be starting a new uh, video series of popular choice. So if I have more people telling me I want currency guides, I will be making a currency guides. If you guys want crafting guides, I will be making a crafting guides. Um, or if all of you say like, oh, I want this type of build, I will be making you know a video of your choice, right? Um, so yeah, please let me know. If you guys have any comments, criticism, or anything that you're confused, please let me know uh, on the comments. If you have questions, you can ask me directly on YouTube or on my Discord. I would suggest saying it in the comments because the more comments there are, the more the video does well. But um, if you guys want to ask me a question, go on the TFT Discord, search for Makoshi, and you'll be able to find me. Just send me a DM and I'll be happy to help you guys. Um, so finally, good luck guys, have fun, uh, and yeah, see you uh, in the next video.